We need more schools. In fact, we need more institutions of higher education. And I believe that you can start them. We have all the examples that we need, from institutions as informal but revolutionary as Coursera or Udacity or edX, to institutions as formal and groundbreaking as University of the People or Minerva schools, to universities as big and dynamic as Harvard or Stanford. I find it hard to believe that the founders of such institutions could have possibly comprehended the byproduct of their intellectual offspring, what they would create, the problems they would solve, the impact they would have. I think most people think that you need to be 50, rich, and have had quite a successful career to start a university. I think this stems from a serious misconception of the very definition of a university. The simplest definition of a university is a community of learners, full stop. A tribe gathered from otherwise obscure parts, together seeking knowledge that changes the way that we think and even the way that we act. This very simple definition, a community of learners, could very easily be the one that we use to describe the Platonic Academy. A small group of intellectuals gathered together with very little formality to their institution that helped shape the thought of Western civilization for thousands of years. My own journey began eight years ago on a bus between Kuchala and Bamako, Mali. I was doing some research for a small NGO. I had come far, 50 hours of buses from Agadez, Niger, the sister city of Timbuktu. The air was full of dust from the annual Hamatan winds. It was hot. My brain was racing from all the conversations that I had been having. I had been speaking with UN agencies and government officials and tribal leaders and high school principals and professors and students and parents and taxi cab drivers and people on the street trying to understand their concerns about the education system in their countries. When something very simple dawned on me, what were needed were more universities. You see, on average in West Africa, around 10% of the university age population enrolls in higher education. And that number is totally skewed by some of the better off countries. Like some countries are at 5% or 3% or even 0.8%. And I started to imagine doubling that number. The impact on the economy that a burgeoning of domestic talent would have. The impact that doubling the quantity of trained doctors would have on healthcare outcomes. The impact that doubling the quantity of trained farmers would have on crop yields, the impact that doubling the quantity of well-trained teachers would have on primary and secondary school enrollment. I was sold. This had to happen and I wanted to be a part of it. And that's all really any of us can hope to be, is a part of something. And so I went back to the small nonprofit board that I sat on and I said, I have an idea. And they gave me this look like, oh my God, here he goes again, another idea. I said, I think we should start a university. It was a simple idea. It was a crazy idea, but it was an idea that I had bought into. And so I went back to do a master's to learn to, to equip myself with the tools to implement this vision. One day, one of my classmates tells me about something called iTunes U, simple podcast style lectures from great universities that are online for free. And so I'm sitting on a bus again. I'm in Singapore this time, on my way to one of my master's classes. And I'm listening to a great lecture from a great university, and it's free. And it dawned on me. I'm, I'm getting a free education from a great university. I'm on a bus, just like I was in Mali. Aha! 
I pretty much couldn't pay attention for the rest of my master's. My mind kept tinkering with what would it look like to create a university from these resources. And so I started to go to conferences, education conferences, technology conferences, education technology conferences, conferences on entrepreneurship, conferences on open educational resources. And my co-founder and I sat down and we started synthesizing this information and crafting a model, a model that took open educational resources like iTunes U, built them into an online system that had peer-to-peer -peer interaction, that had professorial feedback, that you could get a real degree. We started to imagine what would even a campus look like for such a university. Funny thing though, there's a saying, anytime you're working on something, five other people around the world are also working on some, the same thing. And so it turns out that the, same, the people who are working on this same idea, the online component that is, were very smart professors at Stanford and MIT. So we decided to focus on the offline version. I moved to Accra, Ghana. I started an internet cafe type campus, which later became Impact Hub Accra. We started to build physical community. We, we had a football team. We had a cafe where students could chat over lunch and we spent late nights brainstorming and long days prototyping and we built a physical community around online lectures. Some leaders emerged from this community and they became my colleagues, and in fact, they became majority shareholders in the institution as our cooperative model envisaged from the outset. With their help, with their guidance, we started to really adapt our foreign ideas to the local context, and it became more and more West African. And so I kept going to conferences, and I would meet people, I would tell them about what I'm doing, and they'd say, wow, I love what you're doing. I want something like this to exist in my country. And I would say, hmm, well, maybe I could build it. And then I started to think, no, 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 this, this, West Africa is 300 million people. It's incredibly culturally and linguistically diverse. The journey that I embarked on is not something that I can repeat 10 times in my life. It's something that I, I will focus on. But I started to say to them, I started to say, you know what, why don't you do it in your country? You know, you're the one who's best placed to understand the human capital needs of your domestic economy. You're the one who's best placed to craft the business model that would make sense for your, for your context, for your community. You're the one who knows the spaces that are free at certain hours of the day that you could leverage for a, for a campus. You know, there's so many online platforms now. There's so much free content. Almost anybody can build an online university. It might not be accredited right away. Neither was ours. Equally powerful is the local movement that's happening in many of our countries that says we should consume closer to home. Take this model and apply it to higher education and imagine new universities in districts and cities and regions around the world coming up that focus on very specific niche items that don't try to do everything, that do one thing really well. You know, we're too politically disengaged. Youth unemployment is way too high. The ability that a couple of administrators and professors have to create the degrees of the future, it's almost impossible and it's not their fault. Innovation is just happening too fast. We need to recode the very DNA of our higher education system. We need to create a distributed model that can keep pace with innovation. The consequences of inaction are too high. We don't have to look far to see what political disengagement leads to. We need thousands of leaders, such as yourselves, to step up and to create the universities of the future to create the universities that will give your communities the tools that they need to live healthy and productive and meaningful lives. And it's really up to you. Nobody else is gonna do it. This is one of those moments where we say the status quo sucks and we're gonna change it. Please, leave here, take the bus. Start thinking about what your community needs.
the model that it would take on, and then do it, and peace be with you.